In this video, we are going to look at the dilution practice sheet. So when we are thinking about dilution, this is a super important concept because many of the substances that are commonly used by chemists do not come in their uh, diluted form, we might say. Usually, scientists purchase these substances, in particular um, acids and bases, are generally purchased in a concentrated form that we then add water to and dilute down to the concentration that we want to use it in. And you do this sometimes in your household as well. Your parents or you might buy a cleaning product, for instance, that is a concentrated form, and then you add water to it and dilute it down to the concentration that it's actually used at. Um, and so this is a super important concept to understand in science, is this idea that we have a kind of a stock solution or a, a super concentrated solution of a, of a chemical, and then we'll add water to it to dilute it down to its usable form. So the table in the top right gives the concentrated um, molarities for certain substances. And these are usually found on the bottle of the substance, but instead of putting a bunch of pictures of bottles, they're all just given in a table here for you. And then the questions on this worksheet ask you how much of that concentrated substance you need and how much water you need to prepare a specific amount of a solution with a certain concentration. And there's a convenient equation that we can use to figure this out called the dilution equation. And the dilution equation just says that the original molarity times the original volume, or M1 times V1, is proportional or equal to um, the final molarity, so M2 times the final volume, or V2. M1, V1 equals M2 times V2. And so all we need to do is have our initial molarity, our initial volume, our final molarity, our final volume. We just need three of these four pieces of information, and we can solve for the final one. So we are going to start by looking at our problem and figuring out what information we have. So the problem here asks us, what volume of concentrated hydrochloric acid, so it's asking us for a volume, is needed to make three liters of one molar HCl? So the things that we are making are going to be our final molarity and our final volume. So three liters, that's going to be our V2, our final volume, and one molar is going to be our final molarity or our M2. We're being asked to find the volume, so our V1 value, of the concentrated hydrochloric acid. And it doesn't give us our M1 value. We can easily find this from the table that's given. So we just find hydrochloric acid in our table, and we find its initial concentration before it's being diluted. So our M1 value for hydrochloric acid is going to be equal to 12.1 molar. So now we have M1, we have M2, we have V2, and we're being asked to solve for V1. So we're just going to substitute in these pieces of information. And it's really important that you keep careful track of your pieces of information in the problem. So important, in fact, that this first time I'm actually going to write this out again. Our V1 is what we're looking for. Our M1 we found in the table to be 12.1 molar. Our V2 value is given to be 3.0 liters, and then our M2 value is equal to 1.0 molar. It's critical to keep track of your information for a couple of reasons. One is you want to make sure you pair up the correct initial values and the correct final values. And then the second reason is because of our units. So our units of our V1 value are going to be the same as our units of our V2 value. So when we calculate our initial volume, the units are going to come out in liters because that is the unit of V2. If our V2 value was instead given in milliliters, then our unit for V1 would also be milliliters. So it is really important to pay attention to your units that are given 
in your um, provided values. So now let's just substitute this into our equation. We have 12.1 times V1, which we don't know what that is, so I'll keep V1, equals our M2, so 1.0, times our V2 value of 3.0. And you may notice that I'm not putting in units when I set up my algebra problem um, because I've already determined what my final unit's going to be. So I like to do that ahead of time so I don't have to worry about the units when I'm doing my algebra. To solve this problem and isolate V1, we're just going to have to divide by 12.1 on the left-hand side. And if we do it on one side of our equation, we know we also do it on the other side. So these will cancel out. On the left side, we're just left with V1, our variable, and now we need to do 1.0 times 3, so that would be 3, divided by 12.1. And when I do that math, I got 0 0.2479. And we already said that our units will be liters, okay? So, uh, this is our V1 value, and that is our volume of hydrochloric acid. So that's our number of liters of HCl. Now we need to figure out what volume of water is needed for this dilution. So if we think about the process of dilution real quick, we're going to add this little tiny amount of HCl, and this is probably actually too big, but down here is my HCl. What is going to make up the rest of our solution, though? Because we want a total volume. In the end, we want a total volume of 3 liters. So if we only put in 0.2, if we put in 0 0.24 liters of HCl, what on earth is going to make up the rest of this volume? Well, the rest of this container is just going to be filled up with water. That's usually what we are diluting with. We're going to fill the rest of this up with water. Um, so all we need to do to figure out the amount of water needed is to take the difference between our final volume, um, which is right here, 3 liters, and our amount of our concentrated acid that we're adding. The rest of the solution is going to need to be made up of water. So we just need to take the difference here, 3 liters minus 0 0.2479 liters of HCl. Um, the rest is going to be water. 3 minus that value gives me uh, 2.75, uh, let's see, 2.75, one I suppose, 2.1, yes. Okay, to one liters of water. And so you might be looking at this and be like, this is really confusing. Thinking in terms of liters when we have such a small amount of HCl, and you're quite right, this is often difficult to think about. So normally when we're measuring things in chemistry, we tend to measure things out in milliliters instead. So instead of thinking about this in terms of liters, if that is difficult for you, go ahead and take your number of liters for your V2 value, and before you figure out, or sorry, your V1 value, and before you try and figure out the amount of water, convert your liters to milliliters. So I V1 value, if I have 0.2479 liters of HCl in milliliters, that would be 247.9 milliliters of HCl. And so then if I come back up to my picture here, instead of saying, 0.2479 liters, let's just say that this is 247.9 milliliters of HCl, and we need a total volume, not of 3 liters, but of 3,000 milliliters. So we need to know the difference between our 3,000 milliliters and our 247.9 milliliters. So the difference between those, which is a little bit easier to conceptualize, is a little bit, it's a little bit more than 2,500 milliliters to be exact. 3,000 minus 247.9 milliliters um, gives us a volume of water of 2,752.1 milliliters of H2O. 
So to prepare this solution, we can actually give the values in either unit, but typically we want to think in terms of milliliters just because it's a little bit easier for us to think about. So to prepare the solution, we need 247.9 milliliters of HCl, of our concentrated HCl, and then we also need to add 2,752 0.1 milliliters of H2O. The rest of it's going to be made up of water. And we can check our answer by adding these two numbers together and saying, oh, if we add this together, it equals our total volume of 3 liters or 3,000 milliliters. So this is our correct answer here. Number two. What volume of water must be added to concentrated ammonium hydroxide to make 250 milliliters of 0.5 molar NH4OH? So let's go ahead and label some information in this problem. So what volume of water? So it's actually asking us for the volume of water, but before we can figure that out, we need to know how much ammonium hydroxide needs to be added. Um, before we can figure out how much water, because we know that to prepare our solution, we're going to have some small amount of ammonium hydroxide, and then the rest of our solution is going to be made up of water. So before we can figure out how much water we need, we need to figure out how much this really small amount is at the bottom of our ammonium hydroxide. Our ammonium hydroxide gives us the formula already in H4OH. So we need to know what our volume of NH4OH is going to be before we can figure out our volume of water. Um, so let's see. So let's figure out the other pieces of information in the problem. What volume of water must be added to concentrated ammonium hydroxide to make, to make, that make is a keyword here, make, so this is our V2 value, to make 250 milliliters of 0.5 molar NH4OH. So there's our M2 value. Okay, so in our problem, we have V2 and M2. I'm going to go ahead and list out my variables. V2, we said, is 250 milliliters. M2 is 0 0.5 molar. Nothing else is given in the problem. We know we need a V1 and an M1 as well. Nothing else is given in the problem in particular. But we do have our M1 value because we can look at our table of data that's given. So our M1 value, our initial concentration of our ammonium hydroxide, is given to be 14.5 molar. So we can fill that piece of information in. So we must be looking for our V1 value. And then once we find our volume of ammonium hydroxide, then once we know this part, we can figure out the volume of water, which is what the problem's actually asking for in this case. So let's use our equation, M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. M1 V1 equals M2 V2. And we'll substitute in our numbers. Uh, before we do that, let's think about our units. Our V2 value is given in milliliters. So that means our V1 value is also going to come out in milliliters, which is always important to take note of since I don't, I don't really particularly like writing out all the units when I'm solving my problem. So M1, 14.5 times V1 equals our M2, 0 0.5 times our V2 value of 250 milliliters. To solve for V1, all we need to do is divide by 14.5. And if we do this on the left-hand side of our equation, then we also need to do it on the right-hand side of our equation. On our left, we're just left with V1. And then on the right, we're left with a whole bunch of numbers to multiply and divide. 0 0.5 times 250 divided by 14.5. So I got my V1 value to be 8.6. Two. Uh, and then we already determined that our units would be milliliters. So this is the number of milliliters of ammonium hydroxide. So this is milliliters of NH4OH. Now the problem is asking us what the volume of water that's needed is. So we know that the rest of our solution needs to be made up of water. 
uh, we want a total volume, a, to a V2 value of 250 milliliters. So if we are only adding 8.62 milliliters of NH4OH, the rest has to be water. So 250 milliliters minus the 8.62 mils of water. So that, oops, sorry, minus the 8.62 milliliters of NH4OH, sorry about that. It's always important to label things. 250 minus that gives us a needed amount of water of 241.38 milliliters of H2O are needed. Uh, and the problem is just asking for what volume of water must be added, so all it's asking is for this portion as our answer, 241.38 milliliters of H2O.